All right, hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 for cars and coffee, apparently. I was kind of hoping for some funky intro movie, kind of like what we had for the retro wave one, but apparently they couldn't be bothered. But what we do have is a bunch of daily challenges relating to the cars and coffee shop, the western end of the highway, apparently. I don't know if it's going to move around like the uh, stage did for the, uh, what was it, dirt versus track or whatever it was. Equip the coffee cup outfit, so hopefully that's easy to obtain. And then the usual suite of things, such as the trial to get a 488. We've got seasonal championships for a Ford Escort 92. Cos worth a try. Very good. Very good. And a treasure hunt. Perform three skills called a kangaroo. Presumably in an Australian car, because that's yeah, the land down under. And photographing any Nissan Skyline at the El Papilla statue. Uh, that's how we get the coffee cup outfit. Okay, so we should probably do that sooner rather than later. Nissan Skyline. And we do have a fair few Skylines to choose from, but we've got this tuned up to a E700. Crunch, there's someone's bike. Sorry about that. And we might as well just drive down into the city. We'll see if we can find that statue. I'm not entirely sure where it is, but uh, it's near a speed zone apparently, so I should have actually flagged them on my map. Can I cut the corner down here? Ooh, I could if I didn't aim it at someone's backyard. All right, let's try. <laughs> let's try staying on the road, shall we? I can think of a couple of speed traps in the city area. Oh, there's the speed zone up on the hill. Whereabouts can I get up there? We need to head off towards the right, I think, as if we were heading out of town. Then we've got to get up onto the road up the back. Yeah, we are. Now we're going uphill. So the speed zone is through here somewhere, I think, wasn't it? Yes, speed zone starts at this point. We're not going to actually do the speed zone, but it does allow us to drive through traffic, which is handy. And then this will be the statue. There ah, we go. Right up here. Let's just park up. And we can't even fit everything in shot. That's fine. We're not saving this photo anyway. Tick and tick. Coffee cup outfit. Which I believe we now have to wear. But you can only do that when you're at your home. So I guess I'm driving back to the castle. <laughs> We'll see if we can find our way across town. I think I was only able to upgrade the brakes slightly on this car. <laughs> and I have no idea what suspension. There's been many a time when I've jumped into a car thinking it would be suitable for a competition, only to then find that, oh, I'd tuned this one for rallying or something when it's a road race. And returning home. We actually drive inside. There we go. And we only just got changed out of our retro wave outfit recently, and now we're going to be putting on our coffee cup. There we go. Now I'm fairly sure I don't even need to go out. I can see what I would look like. Uh, let's unequip that again. And that should be fine. Looking fabulous complete. Excellent. Being there, done that. Visit the Horizons Cars and Coffee Shop at the western end of the highway. What we should try and do is combine that with some of the S2000 stuff if we can, assuming we own this. And we do not own the S2000 CR, so how do we get one? We'll spin or auto show. 25,000 isn't too bad, and we'll go for a nice sunlight yellow. And let's see where the game has put us. Uh, further away from where we want to be. That's a bit inconvenient. <laughs> what do we need to do now? Winning the Vulcan Sprint. So the Vulcan Sprint is the hill climb. Uh, we don't have this tuned up at all, so we'll just see how this goes. And this is only a mid-ranged uh, B class. It's like a 630. Hopefully we aren't up against anyone who's too unfair. <laughs> Sometimes you get ones that are just a base level that are well in excess of what our rating is. Okay, this thing is not going to turn well. <laughs> we need to take it easy. Rear wheel drive. A bit of sun glare, which is annoying, but we're going away from it, so we should be alright. If I was to tune one thing 
about this car for the sake of this race, it would probably be the gearbox <laughs> to be able to hill climb a bit more effectively. As we are going to be struggling to accelerate through a lot of this. Hopefully, so will our opponents. There's bound to be a few who have taken some tunings. There'll be cars that would otherwise have been C-Class perhaps, or lower Bs. There's, there's definitely some custom wings. The white car in front looks like it has a custom wing on. Which would be handy to just keep a bit of extra power on the rear wheels. Just got to slowly hunt them down. S2000 is a nice car though. Well known for its extremely high revs. <laughs> fairly nimble. It's in a same sort of class as likes of the MX-5 and stuff I think. Quite pleasant to drive. Be even nicer if I had better tyres. <laughs> he didn't want to take that corner very well. Now what is that? Is that a Nissan or Toyota? Once they have that wing on the back, they all look the same. <laughs> That's one criticism of the customization options in this game, is that when it comes to fixing the Forza adjustable splitters, they are literally all the same. Okay, it is a Mazda. So an RX-8 probably. Which would definitely be a better vehicle, I would have expected. But managed to overhaul them. And we're two-thirds of the way there. I just got to remember this corner section up here. We can cut through most of what's indicated as corners, as long as we hold it together. We're not going to be screaming through at super speeds. Then we'll have one more hairpin before the run to the finish. I don't know if we can cut the corner and just go left and up the hill. Break a little bit for that. Almost not enough, in fact. <laughs> That's a bit better. And now we can accelerate. Actually, over braked for that one, I feel. But I've got a decent enough lead that doesn't matter. And across the line. And we'll be reasonably well positioned. For heading down to the coffee shop. So now we're off to the western end of the highway and the next step of our weekly challenge with S2000 is to get some ultimate drift skills. So let's try driving it down a hillside because sometimes you get a good drift. Great. Awesome. I don't know if I got the ultimate. No. I just ended up in a tree. That's a shame. Let's try that again. Skip sideways. Awesome. Ultimate. There we go. Somehow we missed all of the trees. And let's try again around here. There we go. Let's just keep going. Can we? Can we? Can we? Yes. Ultimate. Good. That's two. Throw it the other direction. Awesome. Ultimate. There we go. Downforce drifter complete. Just like that. And now let's just drive it to the end of the highway. We don't have any extra instructions on the coffee shop location, just the western end of the highway. So we'll join onto the highway up ahead. And hang a right. And go west, young man. And we're going to drive as much of this as we can because our next objective for the S2000 is to drive 8 kilometers, apparently. It 
it's not going to be eight kilometers to get there. There we go. You can see cars and coffee. There's the, the drone show in the sky. So it certainly won't be eight kilometers to get there. But once we get there, we can just blow past and head along the coast until we achieve our goal. Okay, so it's in the middle of the roundabout. That makes sense. <laughs> That's a, a good use of the location. Being there, done that complete. Boing. What have we got in here? We drive on in. We can. There's just a wall. That's not very useful, is it? And someone's saying hi a lot. Well, I'm not a fan of spam with my coffee, so let's get out of here and drive up the road. And hopefully get far enough away that that stops. There we go. Nope. Nope. Still going, apparently. Oh, God. <laughs> Is there a range on that? And to finish off of our drive in this, we're just going to head back towards the festival and run along the runway. I'm not sure how long the runway is, but it's got to be a couple of kilometers, right? I've got to get eight total. We've driven a decent way from the top of the mountain to get to the coffee shop. Surely we can't be too much further to go. Aerial open sports complete. That'll be it. Now, unfortunately, we're going to lose all of our momentum, but we do need to use an Australian car now to get some kangaroo skills. So let's hop into the HSV and launch off this ramp that we were heading towards anyway and just bounce across the desert for a bit <laughs> we should be able to get some kangaroo skills i feel but this is just for an ultimate air but then we've got a nice bounce there and across this area you usually get some good kangaroo skills through the desert maybe There we go, there's that one counted. Treasure challenge complete, there we are. And now we need to hunt for our treasure chest in the desert. So, is it going to be off the road? Is it going to be... Ah. By the house, perhaps? It is right in the middle of the area. Ah, in the pipe. Okay, we, we might need a smaller car than this, then. This is a bit of a chonker. This is the sort of thing that you might need just a little... A bath? Nope, we got it. There we go. 100,000 credits. There are some of the boards that are out in the world that are in, like, narrow passageways. And you do actually have to change to a skinnier car to get them sometimes. Because I was doing a lot of my exploration in, like, a bowler or something. A big off-roader. And I couldn't reach some of them. While we're in the area, one of the PR challenges is Speed Trap. We need to get about 250 k's an hour, which should be doable in the HSV, I think, but I am going to get a little bit more of a run on. So let's come up here to the Oasis and pull a brake turn and get a bit of a run up. We've got one and a half k's to gain some speed. So we're up to over 200 at least. I think it was 250 or thereabouts. We've got to take this corner better than that, ideally. Actually, no, this is fine. We can just approach it from an angle here, perhaps. Ooh, the bounce is not good, though. Uh, that's what cost me. That's a shame. Oh, I'm probably in the wrong vehicle anyway, come to think of it. I forget that they do have uh, requirements. Incorrect car for season objective. Okay, let's check what car we need, then. So we need a Nissan Skyline GTR 97, apparently. Well, this is a 1997 GTR. It's the V-Spec, so hopefully it's the correct one. And we'll see if it's the correct one. Based on this, will it say incorrect car? No, 111 Ks now more. Okay, so we're in the right car. Now we just need that run-up. We might also need to do some upgrades because this thing stock is only like a B rating. And if we need to do 250 odd k's an hour that feels like a stretch it might be doable but it feels like it'll be a lot easier if we just soup it up so we'll do an honest attempt 
with no modifications. See just how difficult it is. And then we do have our house nearby that we can just pop into, do some upgrades, and try again. Even just upgrading the tires and transmission is probably all we'd need to do. But if we're going to do something, we may as well go whole hog. It's barely getting into fourth. We are not going nearly fast enough. It is downhill at this point, at least. No, not even close. All right, let's go do some upgrades, shall we? Okay, we have thrown a bunch of money at this thing now. We've done all of the performance upgrades that we can. <laughs> and... Unfortunately, we couldn't upgrade the tires, because that would put us into S1 rating, and it had to remain in A, which makes me a little bit um, tentative about these corners, but we'll do what we can. Oh, yep, we're going to go a little bit wide, and let's try and get it back on the tarmac for this downhill stretch. Can we get it over the 250? Or just. There we go, 255.5. Season objective completed. And with six points needed to get our first prize for the season, we turn to the Event Lab races, because each of these is worth three points. There's actually three of them available too, usually there's only a couple. So we have nine on the table, we just need to do two of them and we'll save the other for next week, well not next week, sorry, next episode, to go along with the Seasonal Championships which combined should be something like 18 points, I guess. Maybe there's fewer seasonal championships, I didn't notice. And there's all the rivals as well, which gives us four points free per season, which is always nice. And we've got another Event Lab Island track here that's very twisty-turny. People love to do, like, raceway replications, it seems. No idea if this is based on a real one or not. But out of the cars I had available, we have gone to the Mini again. Because it felt like that would give us the best chance. Got this Civic looks like in front of us that's giving us a bit of challenge. It's just a hot hatch. Fiesta in general. Is that a Alpha? MG? The spot the badge. Someone is going really far behind, so that's interesting. <laughs> Someone really isn't coping too well with us. It definitely is a tricky map. I've just got to learn how much I have to break for each corner, really. At least it is two laps. It's not just a one and done. Not sure if I managed to push that dude out to miss the checkpoint or not. I hope so. That's the easiest way to get past the AI, is push them off the track. <laughs> Ultimate clean racing, he says blocking someone. One lap down, so it's almost two minutes per lap, so it's a very long one, which is fine. I mentioned uh, last episode, I think it was, that sometimes it is nice to have a bit of a longer lap length, because a lot of them are just tuned around the sort of one and a half minutes or so. Admittedly, this is in a slow car. If we were in a uh, S2 or something like our trusty Aston Martin that I'm sure would be ripping through this a lot quicker. There's a guy who really wants to get past me here. This is a front wheel drive vehicle, I'm fairly sure, being a Mini, so it does tend to run a little bit wide. So I've got the same back corner section that we just need to hold through a little bit. That was a bit better than last time. We didn't go off <laughs> into the trailer park, so that's a start. Ooh, that was not good though. Tried to break more to go into the corner and just ended up running super wide instead. I think I just turned through the corner far too early misjudge the apex entirely. That one I feel that we braked too late. Maybe not. I don't know. That, that one worked out alright. Sometimes you just get this like sense that you feel, oh no, that's too late. And yeah, sometimes it just works out. I think my track sense is just not the greatest anyway. To no one's surprise. 
keep a little bit of power on through that turn and out the other end and that will be three of the points that we need it's weird not having a proper finish line and for the next one we step it up a notch and we have A800 Track Toys as the category. Honestly I was surprised that the Skyline that I just tuned up didn't qualify for this. But we do have an M3 that we seem to have tuned a while ago. Hopefully for the right thing. <laughs> it seems to be stat wise better than the Caterham that we also had as a possibility, or a Camaro. And it is very strange to have something like a Chevrolet Camaro or BMW M3 considered to be a track toy, but not a Nissan Skyline, which more people would take onto a track. Not sure about the categorization logic in the game, but this seems to be doing the business. It's just it would have been nice to reuse the vehicle. But this is one that we've clearly tuned up on a previous time. That was such a messy corner, but it was a case of how do you get through. And if in doubt, use the AI as a backstop on the corner. <laughs> is it the best way to get through? No, definitely not. But otherwise that happens. Someone will dive in on the inside and you don't get to take the good line anyway, so... If you can't corner properly, you may as well use the AI to help you through it and maybe push them out. <laughs> what is that thing in front? Is that a TVR with a stupid spoiler? I'm not sure. No? Oh, Morgan. That'll be a Morgan, I think. Looks ridiculous with the Forza wing on the back. I really do wish they had more suited spoilers for when you upgrade so if you want a customizable wing you have one option pretty much and, and that is the, the stock standard Forza one I feel they had a bit more personalization in 4 maybe I'm wrong but it's just a bit of a shame they don't have a few more unique models or just have them that are customizable natively, because a lot of vehicles will have a wing of sorts. Makes sense that they won't all be customizable, I suppose, but... This is a weird track. It's just laps one out of one. It means you get no perception of how far along you are. It's like the... Uh, was it the marathon race? don't know how far through you are but we've just got this last jungle section looks like we have to work our way up the hill and then race down to the bridge that we started on the one hand I would have liked if it was a multi-lap race instead but at the same time it's over three minutes now for a single lap so kind of glad they didn't <laughs> I've had championships that was quicker than this. Not a bad track though. I did enjoy that. Not sure if the AI did or not. They're lagging behind quite significantly, but not my problem. And there we have it. 20 points in the season. Aventador 21 added to the garage. And in a few days we'll be back for the Ferrari Dino where we will polish off the last event lab. And then we've got, yeah, we've only got two seasonal championships this time. So we don't get 15 points from those. It'll be three and two is five and two is seven. 17 will be three short. Well, there's the Eliminator or there's the four rivals lap. So we'll probably polish those off and have the four points banked for the entire series. It is where they say like four points, four points, four points, four points. Makes it seem like you get 16 immediately, but it's actually one per season because they're monthly. I was also hoping that they might have added some extra accolades or something for the cars and coffee evolving world sort of location, but I haven't noticed any, so that's a little bit underutilized, I think. We don't really have an excuse to go there, so that's a bit of a shame. Be nice if we could have had a bit more 
interaction. Uh, that'll do it for this episode. We'll see you next time.